going on guys getting ready to call it a night i figure why not fire up the camera show you the latest little fella to come out of the riley knife and tool knife shop uh and little fella is actually the name of what i'm calling this knife design uh though it is a little fella i'm actually calling it the little fella uh you guys let me know what you think about that and let me know what you think about the knife too uh, i don't think i'm gonna drag this video out too long i did just want to show you the knife give you the specs uh, there's plenty more I could say about that. Maybe I'll do another video tomorrow uh, if I have time do maybe like a shop update and talk a little bit more about this uh, and some things around it. But uh, I did want to give you the specs. Uh, now, unfortunately, I don't yet have a weight on this. Uh, I'm sure it is extremely light. Uh, well, I'm not even going to make a guess. I have very little capacity for guessing like grams or, you know, ounces or even fractions of an ounce so this guy is very lightweight uh one of these days i need to just get a scale and leave it out here in the shop but uh, uh overall length on this guy uh right at about five and three eighths of an inch thickness uh, i'm using one eighth natural brown linen micarta scales on each side uh, with an 80 thousandths stock thickness or starting stock thickness of aebl stainless steel uh, so that is a little bit of a first for me. I actually heat treated this guy in-house rather than sending it out like I normally would. Uh, and I think I did a pretty good job, too. It seems to have heat treated very nicely, holds a great edge. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be putting this guy through its paces as I'm actually going to keep this one for myself. Uh, I normally try not to keep knives I make, uh, but I want to keep this one for a number of reasons. For one, I do want to prove out my heat treat. Uh as well as just the design in general. Yeah, and I just really like this knife. <laughs> uh, and there's a couple of things, you know, ultimately, uh, I don't know if I'm quite comfortable passing on to a customer. Just really little nitpicks. For one, I didn't mark it yet. Uh, I lost my AEBL stencil with my A. Riley on it. Uh, I've got another sheet coming tomorrow. Uh, so future ones I'll be able to mark. I may even still try to mark this one. We'll see. But yeah, and the other thing is, I don't know if I'm going to mirror polish all of them either. Although this one did come out pretty nice. You see kind of like the infinite regression of blades there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, back to the specs. Uh, cutting edge, about two and a half inches from tip to heel there. Uh, handle length, about two and seven eighths. Uh, again, eighth inch, eighth inch, and then 80 thousandths. So that's a little more than five sixteenths thick overall. And uh, this is very heavily influenced by my featherweight neck knife design. Uh, that's what I've been calling this one. Uh, this one's actually 1095, but you can see it's not so much a shrunk down version as it is a shortened version. So very similar blade profiles, just shorter. So two and a half versus three inches, uh, two and seven eighths, almost three inches versus, you know, three and seven eighths, almost four inches. But as far as the width, you know, that's pretty much the same. Blade width, handle width. Uh, so you still can get a very comfortable, very confident grip on this knife. Uh, it's not going to, like, cramp up your hand, you know, because it's so tiny, uh, at least not as easily. Uh, and you still get about a good, you know, two and a half, three finger grip. Uh, and you can add a lanyard or a bead, you know, for like a fourth finger, which is nice. Uh, and I actually like to do that on these smaller knives. Then you can loop your pinky through it while you're, like, cutting fishing line or tying a knot. You kind of let it hang there and then, you know, go back to using it. Uh, but, yeah, still a very nice, comfortable grip. I feel like I can really do some confident work with this. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the specs. Again, it is brown linen micarta for the handle, AEBL stainless for the blade. Uh, and this particular one, I ground very thin, as you can no doubt see. Uh, actually, I measured just behind the edge with some calipers earlier. I got this down to about three thousandths, believe it or not, uh, which just for reference, or actually about three and a half thousandths. So just for reference, this paper is three thousandths. So about as thin at the edge as that paper. Uh, though I did sharpen a secondary 15 degrees per side. Uh, which maybe you could see slightly. But yeah, this guy is sharp. 
cuts exceedingly well. And it'll pop hair right off of you. I can't wait to slice up some cardboard with this. I think it'll do really well. Great for a little package opener. I mean, even peeling an apple or something, or again, like cutting fish in line, that sort of thing. Or just have it on you just as a backup blade. You know, I don't market any of my knives as self-defense blades. Uh, I think if you got to use a knife to defend your life, uh, a few things have already gone drastically wrong. <laughs> Better to have and not need, you know, for sure. Or, you know, anything is perhaps better than nothing, although not in every case. But you know, I'm not going to say it's like a backup defensive blade, more of a backup working blade. Uh, but just to show you guys, it pretty much disappears behind a shirt. I basically can't even feel that I'm wearing it. Now, as far as the knives I make, most of them probably are neck knives or smaller fixed blade designs that you can carry around a neck. I almost never carry them around my neck uh, as I just don't like having something kind of around my neck, you know, feeling that kind of pulling on me. But this guy is so light and like flat and low profile, I almost don't even believe I have it on right now. I mean, it feels very comfortable. No printing hardly at all on the shirt, even if I kind of pull it tight, which is nice. And I can even kind of pull it over and, you know, there's like a slight print. But uh, at the same time, you know, you need to use it. it pops right out. Uh, and the sheath, I'm really happy with how it came out. I mean, it's like the perfect retention. And uh, just love that little click. <laughs> But yeah, no rattle. I mean, I could just go ham on this and it's not going to fly out of there. So I'm very confident with the retention where at the same time, just two fingers, I mean, it pulls right out. So, you know, I guess when you make a few hundred cheese, <laughs> you know, every couple of weeks, screwdrivers or otherwise, uh, you start getting the hang of it, right? So I'm very happy with how the sheath came out. Uh, still might tweak the design just a little bit. But uh, yeah, this one, this is actually the third try on the sheath because I wanted it as perfect as I can get it. Uh, and I think I pretty well accomplished that. So, you know, you can get a nice full grip on it when you're pulling it out. It's ready to go. So yeah, super thin. Great little sheath. Uh, and what, you know, I say this about every new knife. I, I think it's, they're all my favorite designs. <laughs> you know, when I make them, otherwise I wouldn't make them. Uh, but this is definitely one of the favorite knives I've ever made. Uh, maybe I just said I don't normally keep my knives. I'm going to keep this one, if only to prove out the heat treat, the edge holding. You know, this should be roughly about like a 61 Rockwell, you know, if I had tempered and heat treated everything just right. Uh, so we're going to kind of prove that out. Uh, one of these days I'll get a Rockwell tester. One of these days I'll get liquid nitrogen and that sort of thing. But, uh, I did put a lot of time, uh, a little bit of money and effort into, uh, making sure this was the best knife I could make. And, uh, I think I did pretty well on it. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about the design. If you'd be interested in a little run of these, uh, maybe I already said it, you know, it's late. I forget what I'm talking about but uh i do have three more blanks of these heat treated if i can successfully you know grind them as well as i did this one uh you know i'll put some together have some hopefully listed on the website uh sooner than later we'll see i'm still trying to catch up on sheaths for screwdrivers and tools uh as well as some other projects but i'm going to try to sprinkle these in a little bit at a time uh just to get those ready uh, and hopefully do maybe a little batch release. Uh, like I say, sooner than later. I can't give a hard date just yet. Uh, not quite even sure what the final price is going to be. Uh, definitely under $200. I can tell you that much for sure. Uh, probably closer to about $150-ish. Uh, we'll see. Uh, this is a much more involved heat treat. It's a more expensive heat treat, uh, just more expensive all around, uh, you know, steel, heat treat, electricity, materials. So, uh, you know, it's not going to be quite as inexpensive as uh, these designs, which, by the way, I've also got 
uh, six of these blanks out of e AEBL uh, that I'm going to try to grind and finish at some point as well. Uh, and I've got a lot left in carbon steel I need to finish too. Uh, maybe I'll get around to that before I <laughs> just give up on making knives altogether. But uh, yeah, there's a few in the works. Uh, I've also got some kitchen knives uh, I need to be working on. But uh, yeah, we're 10 minutes in. I'm going to cut this down. I'm ready to go call it a night. But uh, yeah, that's the little fella by uh, yours truly at Riley Knife and Tool. Just a really small, utilitarian, lightweight, uh, but comfortable fixed blade, ready to go to work. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy carrying and using this guy, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it too. And uh, if you really want one, uh, like I said, hopefully I have a few available, uh, at least before next year, right? <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Uh, part of that maybe will depend on the feedback I get from this video. Uh, it will be how motivated I am to finish a few more or even to uh, get some more material and heat treat a few more. But uh, yeah, you guys let me know. Maybe if there's enough interest, I'll even get some, you know, water jet cut and make, you know, a couple dozen of them. I don't know. We'll see. Not going to try to put the car in front of the horse, but uh, I think I got a winner here. And uh, like I said, I'm curious what you guys think as well. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, there's actually quite a bit more I would like to talk about. Some of it even related to this knife. But let's save that for another video when I'm a little more rested. And uh, we'll go over some things there. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. As always, I appreciate your watching. I appreciate your support. And uh, if you haven't already, check out my website, uh, www.rileyknifeandtool.com. See what I have available. Sometimes there'll be knives. Uh, almost always there'll be some sort of uh, screwdriver or tooling sheaths, uh, as well as some knife making related plans and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, check it out. Uh, support me there if you would. As always, uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, and it does not go unnoticed. So that's it, guys. We'll see you on the next one.